Cable operators need to think about the upstream in terms of the long term. How are they going to compete with fiber to the home in the long term? And what they need to do is a number of things. Increasing the amount of usable upstream spectrum, whether it's the 5 to 85 mid-split or SCDMA technologies or using advanced modulation profiles. They also need to think about how they're going to add more carriers. In the downstream, cable operators created more spectrum, dedicated it to DOCSIS, to add more carriers to an existing serving group. And there's no reason to think that they shouldn't go about solving that problem the same way in the upstream. They need to think about adding more carriers to the existing serving groups in the upstream. And that means using technologies like SCDMA and 5 to 85 megahertz split. And all those are provided with the RX-48. One of the biggest misconceptions about DOCSIS 3.0 altogether is the benefits of bonding in both downstream and upstream, but especially now in the, in the upstream direction. Upstream channel bonding and any kind of channel bonding is a good thing if it's deployed properly. Everyone thinks, well, if I have upstream channel bonding, I can get uh, 5 megabits or 3 megabits or 12 megabits. I get a faster service. But that's only the peak service to one customer. If you deploy upstream channel bonding without increasing that average capacity, in other words, the total no megabits per second for all the customers, then you're in big trouble. It's actually a recipe for disaster if you deploy upstream channel bonding without actually increasing the number of channels that are provided. That's exactly what the RX-48 does. It's like turning a four-lane highway into a 12-lane superhighway with six lanes going in directions. You'll have much happier customers when you have that increase in average upstream capacity. Now, true, mathematically, you can't fit six channels that are 6.4 megahertz wide between the edges of 5 and 42 megahertz. And in fact, in our recommendation for how to deploy with six channels, one of the channels is 3.2 megahertz. The fact remains is that you can get six different channels. And by using uh, QAM64 or even 256 QAM at times, uh, our recommendations can get you up to 150 megabits per second, even in a 5 to 42 megahertz plant by using those six channels. Another key advantage of trying to introduce more channels in a service group is the ability to separate residential and business customers. You can define actually a MAC domain with separate channels on each one for business services over DOCSIS and residential customers. And then you can uh, supply, say, three channels for business and three channels for customers. One of the beauties of the RX-48 is that we can effectively implement higher modulation rates because of the RF innovations that are on the card. And so it's now possible to offer 40 megabit per second upstream in 256 QAM. That means only three channels are needed to offer 100 megabit per second service. We definitely believe that the competition of cable operators is going to be such that they have to supply 100 megabit per second upstream service, at least to their business customers, sooner than later. That means they've got to deploy at least four channels if they're staying with the DOCSA standard maximum modulation of 64 QAM. But when they go with the RX-48, they can deploy with three channels just for business and still have three channels for residential. It's basically just the best choice they've got to meet what we think is going to be a critical short-term requirement for additional upstream capacity for both residences and for businesses.